Hey, boys and girls. Hey, let's talk about science. Not the the words that they use as propaganda and give lip service to. Let's talk about actual science. They say the devil's in the details. Let's talk about like an expert on something, right? You can bring up all sorts of examples. I don't remember the guy's name. It's the horse whisperer. The guy that literally can almost have mental telepathy with a horse. There's a real person like that. There's the dog whisperer too. What is his name? Hugo Caesar Milan or something like that. You know, he could, he could, he communicates with dogs almost psychically. You know, he can tell what they need and what the owner needs to do. The guy's a complete and total expert on dogs, just like the horse whisperer. I mean, the guy is just... He's got a magical ability. They even made a video about him. There are probably nobody on this earth that could argue that this guy knows more than anybody about dogs, and that guy knows more than anything about horses. The one thing is, is that if the horse or the dog is sick, neither one of them has a single clue in Hades about how to operate on the horse, do diagnostic elimination about what's going on, you know, how to slice the horse open and fix its parts. They, they, they haven't got a single clue. Yeah, not a single clue. So when we talk about expert on something and what we actually give credence to other people for, especially like, I don't know, doctors, I don't know if you know this or not, but right after cancer, doctors are the second leading cause of death. Yeah, they, they just are. They undeniably are. Doctors uh, killed my uh, wife's uh, father. They've done it... Uh, you could probably think about 10 people in your life at least, and I could probably think about 20. I don't need to think of all of them, certainly not for the sake of uh, making a point in this video. <clears throat> and this is what we keep hearing, and it's a dogma, okay? And I'm always, I'm an information sponge, I'm, an, I'm a truth seeker. Yeah, it's all about, and I get sent wackadoodle links all the time. Someone will send me a link to some video, and it's like, well, this is just some, I mean, it's just some hardcore crazy. It's like, I, you know, I can't give any credence to that. Um, so it's good to be a truth seeker and know how to weed out the nonsense from the stuff that, you know, even if there's not evidence for it, it's like, well, does it logically follow? Is this plausible? Is this person making a rational argument about something? So getting in the fact on science. Today has become a, a, a word of dogma, especially in the past two years. People will say, but, but, but the science, or they'll say, I'm a scientist, but they really do use that word as if, it means something, and let's talk about the word science and make some rational observations based upon facts, logic, and wisdom, which is what anybody should do. And because people don't do that anymore. So, well, this person has a PhD. Well, isn't that lovely? So they can give you accurate descriptions, and they can quote a lot of stuff for you, but do they fundamentally understand something at the foundation? Foundational level understanding, which of course transcends descriptions, it implies genuine understanding is all important and most people don't have it on the field that they profess to be an expert there on, especially the PhDs, especially when it comes to so-called natural science, um, physics, all, all the stuff that people think that, well, these people are a PhD, I have to believe them. Sure you do. What's the science? I'm following the science. You know, uh, my book and article has been peer-reviewed. I love it when people say the word peer-reviewed, which is the most nonsensical statement ever. Peer-reviewed means that you submitted a paper or a book to your peers. They're the same people that taught you to believe in the same nonsense that you, you know, spew forth to other people in the books and articles. I agree with your spew because I taught you that spew and I'm going to I'm going to write a recommendation for your book. <clears throat> My book has been peer-reviewed. People actually say that as if that gives credence and they really really do mean that. And you need to be able to see through that. They give uh, that to their articles and their beliefs, and it is just a belief system, <clears throat> and their statements, such that, that it just lends so much credibility. It was peer-reviewed. People ask me about, like, especially the Buddhists. Back in the day when I would uh, debate the Buddhists on certain terms that I'm the number one expert in the world on, and I am, especially on stuff like Anatta and Anatman. You know, I, I know every single passage, oh, yeah, I read your article on Anatman, but I mean, has it been peer-reviewed? Well... Number one, I don't have any peers on that subject. There's almost no Pali translators in the world. It's an ancient dead language. But you either debate something on the merits of what it says 
And we actually have to have demonstrable sources of reference. It's like, what is the point of reference for saying this is a demonstrably true statement or, you know, this doesn't seem to follow. We don't really have objective empirical proof for these things because no one's seen an atom and yes, I've actually seen the IBM um, fuzzy images of uh, carbon-60 atoms and they're not really, of course, an atom. It's just a fuzzy little spot. No one's seen an atom, but we have to take these people's words on things that nobody's ever genuinely seen. Of course, we have this uh, Saturnian model of the atom where, you know, it's a little nucleus at the center of a bunch of spinning electron, <laughs> bunch of spinning electron balls. And I keep telling people, it's like, you know, you keep attacking me for the denial of electrons. The phenomena is not denial. The fact that Nikola Tesla, uh, Oliver Heaviside, James Clerk Maxwell, and the discoverer of the principle of the electron, J.J. Thompson, who also, too, denied that it was a particle until much later on after he got his Nobel Prize. He said electron, the phenomena thereof, is just one unit of dielectric induction. You know, there's no such thing as an electron particle. This is an abstraction. Eric Dollar called it an electron a broken loose hold, hold fast. It's no different than snapping a rubber band and actually saying the resultant force transferred or energy transferred is an electron. And, of course, if you're a hammer, everything's a nail. And if you're an atomist, everything's a particle. And to these people who are nihilists, and a nihilist by definition is a metaphysical atheist or specifically a materialist, everything is an atom, everything is a particle because that's how their universe works. They're not actual scientists, but they are as mathematicians. So let's get into, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the original, where we base uh, science on, our episteme, yeah? which means to know or to understand or to be acquainted with. We talk about epistemology. And, and of course, let's get to the root of that, epihisteme. Epi means uh, to stand near or uh, to present, and uh, histemi means to prop up or to place. So you're actually standing near something that you know a lot about, like the horse whisperer, or, uh, that, uh, that dog whisperer, Caesar Milan, I think is his name. You know, experts on horses and dogs, but, you know, they intrinsically have no idea how a horse or a dog works. I mean, they can watch external behaviors, and they are genuinely experts about that subject. But being an expert about a subject doesn't mean that you understand that subject. I know this uh, guy who's a buddy of mine. I haven't seen him in ever. He might be dead now. He was married. <laughs> he's, he's married. He might still be married to this lady that's uh, she's head of uh, uh, the pediatric division of a hospital. I won't say which. She's never had a child. She hates children, which she's flat out told me when I had dinner with them. So this is the person that is head of a pediatric department. She, she hates children and she knows nothing about children. But she is, you know, the, the looked up to expert on uh, pediatrics. She's written articles. I even think she's written a book. These people in physics that actually write about uh, quantum, which of course is a made up woo woo word. I, I did say that woo woo word. There is no reference to quantum vis-a-vis -vis Tesla. Uh, certainly not Faraday, which that term didn't exist in Faraday's time. Heaviside, James Kirk Maxwell, um, um, Charles Proteus Steinmetz. This is not a reference to any field modality in the universe. It's not a reference to anything in Mother Nature. It is a reference to a materialistic belief or view upon the nature of the universe, which of course is materialistic uh, today, which sprang out of relativity and it sprang out of a few other people that actually espouse this atomistic view of the universe. So. Um, when people today, and this is what we encounter, they say, well, it's the science, you know, I'm following the science. Or, you know, you need to listen to the science. Or, well, what they're saying is dogma. They're saying you need to listen to the belief system and the dogma that I'm an expert on. Well, you know, these experts on horses and dogs, you know, the two that I mentioned, and they are experts. They don't know how a dog or a horse works. They don't know how to operate on one if it, like, started you know, uh, crossing its eyes and, you know, coughing blood. They wouldn't know how to operate on it. They have no idea. They haven't got a clue. You know, they've been studying dogs and horses their entire life, and they are, you know, genuine experts, but they don't fundamentally or intrinsically know the essa of a dog or a horse, nor could they operate on it. Nor do these physicists that write uh, books and have PhDs uh, and write uh, little articles on quantum and relativity. They fundamentally understand natura natura or mother nature. They have no clue at all. There are no a lot of demonstrable facts. 
And they have, well, so what is uh, algorithm or this uh, math equation uh, accurately describes uh, the interactions of fields with a given vector over a period of time with a result measured in joules, watts, volts, amps, so on and so forth. And these descriptions, where well, they think reproducible descriptions and uh, algorithms and equations, uh, like Maxwellian field equations, well, it's reproducible, we've proven it's scientific fact. Well, let's just talk about the scientific fact that these people were referring to in the case of Maxwellian field equations. For example, it's the science. You know, I mean, and this is exactly what they say. I've debated these people for decades. They say, well, you know, we even navigate uh, um, uh, satellites uh, through Maxwellian field equations and uh, a couple of Isaac Newton's equations. You know, we can make uh, uh, course correction calculations on the Gal Galileo uh, satellite that was uh, orbiting around uh, Jupiter. Well, these demonstrable facts are not in denial. The descriptions are accurate. The equations are accurate for making accurate predictions and, of course, necessary course corrections so a mega million dollar satellite doesn't crash into another heavenly body. But that's not an explanation. There's not a single one of these people once you stop talking in their uh, lingua franca of their dogma, which are the Maxwellian field equations in the case of what I'm talking about, is they can't even tell you what a field is. Like, let's agree that these equations are accurate and nobody's denying that with a half a brain, and I certainly never have. Can you actually explain what's going on? Can you define a field? No, I can't define a field. Oh, you can. So everything is fields and you can't define it. Why are you so hubristic in this uh, dogma and this belief system that you have? You have accurate descriptions and reproducible uh, equations for like course corrections and so on and so forth, but you can't actually define what gravity is. The scientists will actually admit, most of them will anyway, they have no idea what this phenomena of gravity is. I mean, this absolutely perplexes them. They can't explain instantaneous action at a distance. You know, they, they invent something that's imaginary which has never been seen by any instrumentation, much less by human eyes. Well, we have gravitons. What we do is we have the exchange of virtual... Oops, I dropped the stone. <laughs> Sorry about that, I got more stones here on the table. They'll say the interaction between uh, different objects is the exchange of virtual photons. These people will actually tell you what's going on between two magnets that are mutually accelerating or mutually repelling. is the exchange of virtual photons. They, they actually say and believe this stuff. There's no evidence for that. That's no different than religion. It's arbitrary dogma. No one has ever gone looking to the answers to things that they think they know the answers to. And these people are exactly like that. They dwell in this uh, perpetual, you know, like a, a group of dogs. I've seen it once in nature. Like one dog is sniffing the rear of another dog, and that dog is sniffing the rear of another dog, and that dog is sniffing the rear of the first dog. <laughs> They're, that's what a, that's what peer reviewed is. It's just a bunch of fools that agree with each other's foolishness. It's like, well, you can't argue the facts. It's like, what facts are you talking about? Reproducible equations? Well, yes, that's right. You know, many people can take these equations, plug them in, and do a course correction for satellites, and it works. Well, that's an accurate description with equation tacked onto it, but that's not an explanation of anything. You can't define what light is. You have no idea what a field is. I mean, these people will tell you that light's an emission, it's a wave and a particle, and a wave-particle duality, which is nonsensical, since there are no dualities in nature. That's an inherent contradiction to the simplicity of nature. It's completely and utterly impossible. Um, science is not facts. Science is a dogma of consensus of those that stand around something. This is what episteme means means to know or to understand fundamentally epistemi empirical knowledge about something. Well, we can make demonstrable predictions about stuff. We plug in the equations. We know it does this, this, and this. When this happens, when we do this, this, and then that happens. It's like, well, that's, that's not in denial. I mean, nobody's refuting that, so. When you talk about the actual definition of science, it doesn't mean to truly comprehend. It's not genuine wisdom and insight into the nature of what it is that you're a PhD thereof. I'm a PhD professor of physics and natural science. And it's like, well, good. Everything is fields, and fields are not particles, so define a field. Not a trick question. Well, I have no idea what a field is. 
The lines of force. Uh, lines of force is not... Yes, it's an explanation. I've actually argued this before these people. The lines of force, what a field is. Well, force is not a thing. Force is something done upon something by something else. You know? That's like a slap. And you say, if you define a field, so well, a field is a slap, like force. Well, a slap of what? A slap is a hand that is brought into motion and it releases energy and it gets transferred to something else. So you just, you just made an abstraction to the definition of a field. It's like lines of force. That's the second half of what they say. They always say that. Because you can't explain wireless power induction. So the movement of energy, the movement of electrons, they will always 100% of the time say, yes, that's right, movement of energy is movement of electrons. Well, how do you explain wireless power induction, especially in a vacuum? There's no electrons moving. There's, there's no connectivity between these two things whatsoever. Well, in that case, we have field induction. Well, you, 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 you haven't defined a field yet. You can define a field. Lines of force, I told you. Well, lines came up from uh, constructive and destructive interference they see in field interactions. But there are no lines in nature. A line is not a thing. It's a concept that human beings came up with. And a force is not a thing either. A force is no different than saying waves. Force and waves do not exist. A wave is not a thing at all. A wave is what something does, right? It's my hand waving. It's a wave. So they conceptualize and they abstract things. It would be a far wiser, genuine scientist to say, you know, I have a deep desire to know. I fundamentally don't know what a field is. I do know what a field is, by the way. You know, but I really want to know. I have a burning desire to know. It's like, well, you are a true scientist. But science is a dogma. When all these people keep saying, but, but the science, I'm a scientist. Well, so what? Your demonstrable facts, which are not in doubt, do not give credence to your inability to give the essence and nature of what something fundamentally is. You can't explain it. You know, if you can't explain a field is, stop pretending to be the guru of gurus. You're just, you're a person that can plug in numbers into an equation. You know a lot of equations, and that's perfectly fine. I'm certainly not against equations or math. Obviously not. You know, they're important for recreating things. They're important for accuracy. All hail numbers for recreating accuracy. Reproducible results in accuracy. Very, very helpful for demonstrable things. But until you can explain something and say what it really is in itself, of itself, by itself, then you don't understand anything. So all these people that use the word science, they just throw it around like the church used to throw around words. How dare you defy the church? Well, yeah, but I have a question. That doesn't make any sense, that edict from the Pope. How dare you? We're the, it's the science. It's, when the, uh, the Catholic Church used to say, but the Pope said, a papal, papal bull or papal edict, it's like, it, it is what it is. You just don't, you, you don't refute it. You know, it's, it's something in the ground that you can't even question. If you can't question it, then it's not real science. And people say, it's a science. How dare you question it? Well, since you said that, it's not science at all. It's a belief system and a dogma. You didn't allow me to question it. You just refuted yourself. And you've seen people do that. You, you can't question it. It's the science. Mm. Mm. I'm going to fight you if you question the science. If you can't question it and ask genuine questions about it, not like trick questions or trap questions, but genuine questions, there ain't no way it's the science. It's not a science by definition. It's not. It's just another dogma. It's just another belief system. They have their own little silly books. Well, my professor who taught me, this is his book. It's the Bible on this subject. He has a PhD right there. He's got two PhDs. Who peer-reviewed your book? <laughs> Where's your PhD at? <laughs> oh, I need a PhD to ask a genuine question about why you're inconsistent, illogical, and unwise. That's right. When people don't let you talk about stuff, and uh, don't want you to question the stuff that they keep telling you. It's the science! Then you know it's just, nothing, it's just a religion. It's just a crazy little religion. It's a silly little belief system. The only difference between you know, priests and uh, uh, you know, belief systems and their, their burning of the incense and their stupid robes is you just replace the stupid robes with a white lab coat and you replace the burning incense or whatever religious iconography with a 
with a, uh, a beaker, uh, a gas centrifuge, a telescope, countless other uh, instrumentation. <laughs> That's all it is. It's just a religion. That's not truth. It's not Mother Nature. It's not a quest for understanding. So, always raise your eyebrow to someone who doesn't want you to question things. This is a science. How dare you question it? Yeah, right. You pedal that garbage down the street, girlfriend. Get on your little Schwinn bicycle and pedal that belief system down the street. And that's not truth, logic, facts, and wisdom. It, it's science. They say it like it's something different than a belief. They are literally espousing the thing that they hate. When they say, it's a science, what they're really saying subliminally is, this is science, it's not a belief system, it's not like nonsense, like, you know, <laughs> it's exactly what they're doing. They're literally teaching and uh, putting forward the same thing that they profess not to be. Which says a lot about who they are. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, and goodbye. I dropped my rock somewhere. I know it's down there somewhere. Where'd my rock go? I know it's somewhere. Where'd it go? Oh, well, I'll find it later. <laughs> oh, there it is.